Hi, welcome to Mercurius Being Astro Update. I am Amy and I am here to run through the energies of the Libra new moon, which is exact on April 5th, which is Wednesday at 11.30 p.m. Central Time. But please check when and where it is in your time zone. So here is the chart for the full moon. Did I say new moon before? Full moon, Libra, full moon. So we have the moon up here all by herself, opposing the sun, and the sun has some allies in Jupiter and Chiron, and we still have the shape of Mars and Pluto on the edges of this basket. Um, so, the moon is the handle of the basket. It has a lot of energy, a lot of weight to it, shall we say, um, as the handle. And then the Mars and Pluto contents of the bowl, you know, rimmed by Mars and Pluto, which um, again, both energies are about our um, will and our subconscious desires and power, and Pluto might be more that subconscious power or depth of power, and Mars is more the outgoing assertiveness or the action. Um, and I did not even mean to talk about this, so I really don't have much to say else, except that the moon is opposing the sun, of course, at a full moon. And so the outer rims of the basket still weigh in, you know, and this is an ongoing shape. It's not like, you know, this is just the way they've been in this heavens for a bit. And um, we'll continue to do so until the sun and Mercury and Venus move a little bit up and past Mars. So this is kind of a chunk of time when Pluto and Mars are on the rim. Again, really allowing us or inviting us the opportunity to go in and express and understand personal power and the power of the depths and the power, underlying power of everything that's going on and how you fit into that, which I think I touched on in my last video. Um, and I say, I think, cause I can't always remember, I am going to say, I'll come to this later, I would encourage you to go back and watch the um, Venus Star Point video. And I, I believe the first 20 minutes or 25 minutes of that is about the, the Libra Star Point. Um, here's the chart for that. Um, and then the next part of it is um, about the Libra New Moon. So, Libra Venus star point, excuse me. Anyway, um, the reason I say that is go back to, and if you don't want to watch a video, that's cool too. Um, <laughs> but October 22nd of 2022, um, we had this alignment and it was the Venus star point, And I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but it was at 29 degrees Libra, 26 minutes. Venus starting a new point in the sign of Libra and all the symbolism and history associated with that placement. At that time, Jupiter was at zero degrees Aries. Okay. So thinking about that time, thinking about what's happened to you personally and collectively between that time and this time, or going back into that time. And I know I made a video, <laughs> um, actually it was a few days before, for that point, I can't remember the, the exact date, you know, I, I will look back at that personally, um, but it really, uh, I just checked to see, um, and I'm coming to the end, hopefully, of this sinus adventure, um, but at that point, I had a really significant personal point um, with my health, something really weird and um, tied in, so I am just thinking, so it's been you know, since the, the sun was in Libra at 29 degrees, um, that that has this period of time and what has happened for me. So just look back and see what has happened for you and see if you can mine some of that for fruitfulness. And especially, and I don't mean to be USA-centric, 
but since I am from the United States and that Venus star point, and um, anyway, just really ties in with the United States charts. Um, so there's something about the collective in the United States and I'll get into the Chiron and healing of the wounds and things we need to look at. Um, but just simple time-wise, so Jupiter at that star point, zero degrees Aries, the Sun and Venus um, conjunct at 29 degrees Libra, 26 minutes. And I won't get into the um, new moon solar eclipse, the second Aries new moon of this year, and that's called a blue moon, um, which doesn't have any significance, just means there's two new moons in the same sign, and that happens occasionally, thus the term once in a blue moon, not as often. Um, but that occurs at 29 degrees Aries, so that's directly opposite the Venus star point of 29 degrees Libra. So, and then again, Jupiter at zero degrees Aries at the Venus star point back in October. Jupiter, um, excuse me, then the Aries ingress, the Aries new moon, which were both at zero degrees Aries for the sun, and then the sun and the moon. Are you following? It's just this boom, repetition of themes. Boom, repetition of themes. You know, so when any time we have this opportunity to experience these same energies, it's a gift. <laughs> Treat it like a gift, right? Like, look and journal and feel into and meditate. Go back in time. Or even if you don't have any remembrance or awareness of what was going on back then, notice since March 20th, when the sun came back into Aries, and then we had the new moon in Aries, what has come up for you and then what has come up collectively as i talked about in the pluto aquarius ingress aquarius video um just that these points are getting hit and what i think is significant because in my personal chart they're not necessarily touching anything specifically but they're definitely reverberating in life areas, which we call the houses um, in the chart. Um, so if you have a planet that's getting hit by this, like you are feeling it or you are experiencing it more intensely. Okay, so the at the new moon and the ingress, Mars was squaring the sun, and then Mars was squaring the sun and the moon. Mars is the ruler of Aries. So, like challenging, pushing, challenging a little more. And at this full moon, I gotta make sure I don't get ahead of myself, um, Mars really doesn't have all that much to weigh in on. It's almost like sitting back, watching it, Mars will come back and it's, it's not gone anywhere. It's just, I'm not adding it into the lunation. Um, it will be a factor in the last lunation, um, the second new moon of the month. Um, and I won't, um, it's working toward more, more creativity. Um, so at this time, what is more highlighted is Jupiter opposing the moon, Jupiter conjunct the sun, and Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries, conjunct the sun. Um, I'm just looking down at, at the next chart. So Chiron, wounded healer, it's like this little key shape, um, very close to the Aries sun, very close to opposing the Libran moon. Um, I wrote, the thing I wrote about Mars, so I'm gonna go back and forth um, between kind of just letting this flow in from my guides, from Metatron, from the Kriya Yoga guides, um, and from what I wrote earlier, which also might be partially challenged, challenged <laughs> or channeled. Hmm. Mars, I just had written earlier before I, um, as I was preparing, uh, it's kind of smiling on the arrangement. So I was saying, oh no, it's it's not an involvement, but 
apparently earlier today I was thinking it was smiling on the arrangement. Um, it's sextiling Mercury, which is now in Taurus. Um, and Mercury is getting ready for its um, maximum evening elongation. So it's farthest distance from the sun, which heralds the first event of the Mercury retrograde in Taurus cycle. Um, Mars, as the ruler of Aries, is aspecting Saturn in a trine still. Um, and I'm like, it is get her done energy, Saturn and Mars. When they're working together, like, mm. And then Saturn, however, is kind of checking, giving a check to the sun and moon. Saturn is um, sesquiquadrating, it's like a square and a half. And then um, the sesquare, 45 degree. So it's challenging. So a square is full on conflict, ruled by or symbolized by Mars. So it's like a square and a half and a half square, so minor aspects. But Saturn, of course, um, is the god of structures, but it's in Pisces now. So as it's kind of checking the sun and the moon, it's kind of saying, hey, are the structures you're building and the energy you're aligned with um, part of your spiritual vision? So that's, you know, a little... it's a higher level of attunement for the Mars, um, excuse me. So the Saturn in Pisces asking to align spiritually, checking the sun and the moon, sun and Aries conjunct Chiron and Aries, I'll get into that. And then the moon in Libra, which, you know, Aries is all about asserting and initiating and risk-taking and, um, you know, the defenses of the body and um, agency and physical power. And Libra is all about balancing and harmonizing. Aries is all about individuating and self. Libra is all about self and others. And Libra is the only um, sign of the zodiac that's inanimate. So it's scales, the metal scales. So even though there's this balancing and harmonizing aspect to it, it's it can be a very cold, it's an air sign, it can be a very cold and analytical sign in that way. Um, well, the scales of justice. So fairness in Libra could be fair of face and beauty and aesthetics but it also can be fairness as in justice. So in, in Libra, you're balancing, hey, me and another, like how are we working this out? And Aries is all about, in a, in a good way, me, 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 but like in a way of like, hey, I'm here and I'm, I'm, I'm doing my life. Not like, oh, me, huh, it's all about me. You know, it's like, I'm in a physical body. This is my life. I'm shooting my shot. <laughs> like, this is it, right? And then Libra pauses. That's the polarity in the, the full moon. Like, hey, you're doing this, but how is that affecting others? You're doing this, but is it a coming across in the relationship? And usually these are closer relationships with Libra. Okay, um, Jupiter in Aries is that, again, initiating. So this has been, um, oh no, I didn't know. Well, obviously it was back in October when Jupiter went into Aries. I'm not sure how long it stays in there. Um, usually Jupiter approximately a year in every sign, but I think it's moving out a little bit before then. Dips in and out. Risk-taking energy, trying something new, confidence, boldness, hot, fiery expansiveness. So, you know, Jupiter since last October, pushing that. Jupiter's the biggest planet. Lots of heat, lots of expansiveness. The ability to extend your mind past your limitations and boundaries, like really believing and taking a risk, taking that leap of faith. A lot about faith, okay? Um, shadow Aries is argumentative, combative, angry, overly competitive, impulsive, and rash and brash. Um, so at this full moon, this Libra full moon, 
Yeah, I even wrote on the chart Libra new moon. Isn't that funny? So like we'd have three new moons this month. Libra full moon. I thought of it as like a midterm exam. So it's kind of a time to pause at the full moon, see how we are doing, how are you doing, how are you expressing the Aries energy, that initiating, assertive, risk-taking, beginning, starting energies in your life, okay? Um, is the Libra giving you a little bit of a check? Do you need to slow your roll a little bit? Are there things which need to be factored in or balanced in your new ventures or your new energetic outlooks? Um, so again, that balance between self and others, or have you not expressed all that fiery Aries energy? Have you not done that enough? Um, are you seeing more clearly where you may have over-compromised and under-asserted in your relationships? Um, I'm gonna, I hope I don't butch butcher the Stephen Forrest story. He tells it the best, so if you get an opportunity to hear him say it. He used an example, it was at the um, Air Signs workshop. Um, and he talked about Venus and that balancing aspect and the Libra. And he used the example of being on the first date with someone. And I hope I haven't used this example before, but if I have, I have. Um, like, or being on a date with somebody and you're really enamored and you're really bridging and really making connections. Both of you are, right? You're back and forth and they're like, like, um, oh man, I just, I love bike riding. And you're like, oh my God. You know, I love bike riding, like you're connecting. They're like, oh my God, I love macaroni and cheese. And you're like, oh, I love macaroni and cheese. You know, you're just flowing. And then they say, I love the Grateful Dead. And you kind of stop and you kind of, I love music, right? So there's that point where you realize like, okay, I'm bridging, I'm bridging, I'm with you, I'm with you. Hey, I'm sorry, I don't mean to drag the Grateful Dead, but I, I thought it was hilarious that he used that and I could also would be using that in an example as well. Um, so, cause everything is not everybody's cup of tea, right? And in relationships, if you compromise too much, you overwork that Venus, oh my God, you've balanced yourself out of being yourself. And what's the point of that, right? Oh, I am, per everybody loves me because I'm whatever they want. That's very Neptunian, but it's, it's also very Venusian, overly balanced. Like, oh, I just created this perfect substance, kind of like tofu, that takes on whatever you cook it with. And I love tofu, um, but it's not everybody's bag. So let's just take the risk of pissing some people off and being yourself, okay? Um, so there's this energy of being yourself and I'm gonna flip into Chiron now. Um, Chiron, again, conjunct the sun, opposing the moon very tightly. Chiron and Aries. Um, Chiron, um, known as the wounded healer, the broken open heart, also referred to as one's inner child or your inner old soul. So there's a great deal of really deep old wisdom to your Chiron. And there's a great deal of that super vulnerable young child hurt and wounding that get triggered, that gets triggered with Chiron. So for everyone, Chiron is an Aries. Um, it went into Aries um, April 17th on 2018, retrograded back out September 28, 2018. Then it went back in February 8th of 2019. And then it's still in Aries until it moves into Taurus in June of 2026. So we still have three good years. Um, so it's approximately seven, seven, eight years in each sign. Um, so this is pretty direct from astrology.com. Um, Chiron and Aries, um, two of the 
the periods they cite 1968 to 1977 um, and 1918 to 1927 um, and then it was also in Chiron was in Aries when we signed the deck the United States again signed the Declaration of Independence um, it was discovered Chiron was discovered in 1977 so at the end of its Aries um, actually, I should have checked the date for that because that would be a little interesting thought piece. I'll include that in the notes in the bottom. Um, let me write that down, lest I forget. Because it'd be interesting if it was found, um, discovered while still in Aries, um, giving birth to it, or did it get discovered um, at the end of Aries when it got into Taurus and it's like physically known and seen and has presence. So I will look into that, add it to the notes. So this is pretty literally or directly from astrology.com. Uh, Chiron in Aries is saying, here's what your problem is, <laughs> now fix it. Um, so within two days of Chiron moving into Aries, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, highlighting racism, oppression, and brutality in the United States. In 1918, from 1918 to 1927, um, notably the years of the Spanish flu and World War I, um, it also created the Lost Generation, which defined the rest of the time of Chiron and Aries during that period. Uh, Chiron and Aries heralded the civil rights movement, the feminist movement, the end of apartheid, um, women getting the right to vote, signing of the Declaration of Independence. It really is the era of rebels. However, it points to the fact that if we don't tackle or try to tackle our issues during this time, we can become too consumed with pleasure seeking and escapism. And we will pay for this inaction, our inaction, in the years to come. So like, I was like, okay do it, <laughs> right? Do the work. Um, Chiron and Aries trying to heal the wounds instead of ignoring the pain, taking action and confronting conflict in some way by doing something new um, and will be in less pain later. So really going into collectively, we're still doing this. Um, and then individually, it's a call to, for sure, if you have a first house, which is the natural house of Aries, a first house Chiron or an, a Chiron in Aries in your natal chart, this is really, because, you know, that would be a, a Chiron return for those of you who have um, Chiron in Aries, so the people born between 68 and 77. Um, there are some people that still would be around from the 1918 to the 1927. Um, hopefully at this stage of their life, they are just blissed out and they don't need to work on anything. Um, anyway, so those people, first house or Chiron and Aries, like the, you may be experiencing similar themes. Um, but for all of us, this is just another invitation, like really look at yourself. Where is your Chiron? What's it calling you to do? Um, I was going to read from Adam Gainsburg's book, but I, I don't know if I will, but Adam Gainsburg has this lovely book. I'll note it in the bottom, all about Chiron. That's beautifully written and has a lovely, it's, it's very digestible for the people who are not super into astrology either. Um, so, um, Another tie-in I was gonna say, uh, just these weird little tie-ins, I'll kind of conclude with that. Um, the, at the US natal chart, Jupiter was at five degrees Cancer 53. And looking at this Libra full moon, Mars is at five degrees Cancer 46. Um, or 49. <laughs> so it also, again, is like a super wake up call from the United States, you know, obviously the Venus star point, uh, the US Pluto return, which was exact back in um, 
it was 222 of 2022, so February last year. It was exact, but it's really been active within Orb since 2019, and it'll stay active and in Orb until 2025. Um, you know, so again, um, Chiron being this vulnerable wound that is also our greatest strength or gift, and Chiron was a centaur. It was he was the son of the Titan Cronus and a half brother of Zeus. Um, his mother was Philera, a sea nymph, um, famous for um, wisdom and medical knowledge. Chiron was he taught the um, Greek hero heroes of Hercules, Jason, Achilles, and Asclepius. And um, the caduceus is the um, the medical symbol with the, the two snakes. The uh, rod of Asclepius is the single rod with the single, with the single snake. So you still see that in medicine today. Um, and Chiron was accidentally injured with a poisoned arrow shot by Hercules. And so it was an incurable wound um, and he just suffered unbearably with this, um, but he was immortal, so he couldn't be killed, but he gave up his mortality to be placed in the constellation Centaurus. Um, in one set, uh, telling, he renounced his immortality in favor of Prometheus, who was um, known for the one to bring the fire down from the gods to the humans. So kind of file that one into your mind and your energy field and see what that tells you. Um, so fun fact, I did not know this. Okay, the supercar company Bugatti produced 500 of their Chiron models from 2016 to 2022. Like, how cool is that? I mean, I, I've watched Top Gear before <laughs> with my family, and I always remember the Bugatti Veyron, because these were probably old episodes. Um, anyway, did not know they had a Chiron. How much more Chiron and Aries can you get than naming a car Chiron? And it's a supercar, it's a Bugatti. Look it up, it's amazing. Um, so I am going to wait on mentioning anything else about the next Aries new moon. So we'll continue that story. Um, but a little sneak peek preview, Pluto will weigh in at the next lunation. Dun, dun, dun. So <laughs> do your work before the Lord of the underworld joins the chat. Um, own your shit before the God of the underworld joins the chat. Um, get right with yourself because the world is moving on, honey. And I'd like to just end with a quote from Billy Bragg's song, um, Great Leap Forward, I think it is. Um, you can be active with the activists or sleep in with the sleepers. So it's your choice. Anyway, until next time.